Hey everybody, it's Rich from trekwithus.com and uh, today I'm going to do kind of a fun project. I'm going to be swapping out the factory speakers in the front doors and this is a E450. I think it's an actual 2011 chassis even though it's a 2012 Winnebago and uh, this is what the, the factory Ford speakers look like. They're kind of cheap little magnets on the back sounds not that great. <clears throat> and what I'm going to be putting in are some infinities that uh, these are infinity reference. See the magnet side? And these have directional tweeters built into the center versus these kind of don't have much anything. Infinities come in a, a box like this. Just using part number 6832CF and uh, these are 6x8, 5x7 and they're perfect fit replacement for the Ford speaker. I think uh, a set on Amazon is about 50 bucks and uh, I'll put a link to the exact ones I'm using uh, on my website so click on the link below the video and uh, you'll see the uh, the link through to the, the products that I use. To do this you need just a Phillips screwdriver. You do need a, a star driver because the speakers are held in with these are Torx drivers, screws uh, it makes it easier if you have a wire stripper, and then I use this crimper, which is actually a, a bike crimper. This has a crimping tool on the end, but it's not nearly as good as this one. Last but not least, you want these little clips. This is a uh, positive, negative, and you can get these. They even have them at Walmart. And uh, these are for, if you look on the back of the speaker, you get your positive and your negative. The positive is the big clip, and the negative is the little clip. So we're going to be putting the wires on these, and then clip them in the back of the speaker to make it all go. So I'm going to put the uh, video focus on the door so you guys can see what I'm doing. And uh, first things first, we got to take off the door panel. First thing we need to take off is this piece. This is easier on the uh, passenger side because there's no no mirror control. Driver side to get the mirror control, but there's a very visible screw right in here. And it's up to you if you want to disconnect any of these wires. All that you really need to get to is this screw. There's actually four screws that hold the doors on. This one here. I'll show you where all these are located and then I'm going to take them off. Alright, there's one right behind there. Alright, so there's one right behind here and you just gotta pull this little cover off. Doesn't hurt to have a flathead to do that. <clears throat> and then there's another one all the way down at the bottom of the door. It's just behind this little cover. Okay. And then the last one, we actually have to take some of these off. I'm going to have to take this one out and pop off this panel to get to, so I'll show you that in just a sec. Alright, so I've taken out the other three screws. This last screw, you actually have to pop this guy up. Another good reason to have a flathead. Let me go grab a flathead. Alright, so I popped this up with a flathead. The thing about all these things, they're, they're just held in with these little clips. So they do require a little kind of jerking force to, to get them to pop out. And then these are easiest to deal with if you just take this piece off. You can leave the wires connected and you can see you just press in this tab and it'll pull out. But I can't do it with one hand so I'll take this off. This one's the same way and then I'll show you where the last screw is. Alright, so the last screw we're trying to get to is actually all the way in there. And to get to it, now that we've taken off this top piece, we're just going to pop out this piece which is here, and you can see it's got clips here, and the other side is hooked in, so you gotta actually pop it out on this side first, and then the whole piece will kind of pull out that way. And again, I don't think I can do it with one hand. Here, I'll put this up on the stand one second. Yeah, there it is. It takes a little bit of effort, so you use your clips and they will pop right back in, so I'm just going to get this last screw out. Okay, and this screw, okay, it's not 
with this screw. It actually goes right there. So it's kind of above the handle. And it looks just like all the other screws, just one of these. All right, and once you get the last screw out, this whole thing just kind of lifts up. Carefully, so it's not to break anything, but it's kind of loose and just pops right up and off. And that's the door panel. All right, now we get the inside of the door, and the most important thing, the thing we're worried about. Is our speaker. So this is where a Torx comes in because it has Torx screws. And then you have the Ford clip in the back. <clears throat> Alright, speaker off. Alright, so now, and this is important, <clears throat> you've got your, uh, your wiring, and the wiring is different on each side. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this, but on the driver's side door you have a white wire, and a white wire with a brown stripe. I had to look all these up, but you want to make sure you do positive to positive on the speaker, negative to negative on the speaker. And the white wire on the driver's side is positive, and the white with the brown stripe is negative. And on the passenger side, they're different. One of them is white with a purple stripe, and one of them is white with an orange stripe. On the passenger side, white with purple is positive, white with orange is negative, and uh, I'll list it all on my uh, on my site again so if you want to check it for reference that's where I'd look so <clears throat> so this is a proprietary Ford clip and we don't need it so I'm just gonna cut it right off and then we're gonna strip these wires down just a little bit get our stripper and I found that the smallest size seems to work This kind of stuff is so much easier with wire strippers. I mean, these things are like 10 bucks and save you a lot of time. So then <clears throat> we're going to use the little clips. <clears throat> the positive is the big one. And as I said, that's going to go on the white. White with the white. These are Park Tool crimpers, and I like them just because they they're so strong. Like, you can really crimp anything with them. So these are both super securely crimped on there. I don't want them coming loose, of course. One of the nice things about these speakers is they have directional tweeters. You turn them to aim them. All right, so you want to kind of have your directional tweeter turned up at wherever you're sitting. <clears throat> so first thing, we're going to clip these in the back. And they do clip on pretty, pretty firmly. And then we're going to get this guy lined up. I want my uh, directional tweeter kind of pointing up, up and back at me where I'm sitting. So I've got it turned up and back. And then last but not least, we're going to put the screws back into place. And in general, it's a good idea to get all your screws in partway before you tighten them all down, so it just makes it so you can get it lined up correctly because you don't want any of the screws or washers pushing on the rubber surrounds. It'll mess with the speaker and the sound. Get them all tightened in there the rest of the way. You don't have to over torque them, you just want them in there nice and snug. Right, up and back, 
All right. So then the last thing is uh, just putting the door back on. So I'm gonna move this back and I'll put everything back together and you're just gonna reverse what you what you did in the first place. Main thing with the door going back on is just gonna make sure you line up your, your lock in the lock. You actually got to start by aligning the hooks in the bottom. Just take your time with it. this on <clears throat> because this screw actually goes through the outside of this piece. So this piece has to be on first. When you get back on, you hook the left side underneath and then you just pop the clips in. We got this piece. And that's about all there is to it. Uh, I think doing this while filming myself, changing the speaker out took me less than 10 minutes. And uh, I think the passenger side is even easier because you don't have the extra wires from, uh, from this piece. So uh, to me, well worth it. The factory speakers, you can barely even hear music driving down the road. It just sounds awful. So uh, I think the Infinities are going to be a little bit clearer, a little crisper. And uh, that's what I'm looking for because uh, if you spend enough time driving, uh, it makes sense to have decent music, and I think it's a $50 upgrade that's well, well worth it. So uh, that's it for today. Till next time, happy trekking. Mm -hmm.